Hello everybody and welcome back to Mastering Avantra. Today's topic is a welcome to Avantra 23 which we released this month. What I'm going to do in this session is talk through some of the new features and new areas of Avantra 23, show you a few of them in the product um, and just give you a high level view of what you can expect when you upgrade to Avantra, Avantra 23. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to log into my system um, and nothing unusual here. Uh, we're in a normal Avantra system as you would be well used to seeing. Um, so what I'm going to do just before I dive into the individual features is let me pop over to the release notes over here. So this is at docs.avantra.com. You'll all be very familiar with this. It's not changed in a very long time. Um, and this is our release notes that we have available there. Um, Really encourage everybody before you do an upgrade of enterprise software, read the release notes, make sure you're aware of what's coming, what's changing, and, and any pitfalls that you may want to avoid as part of your upgrade. So there are a few areas I'll talk through today. The first one is the enhancements to the automation engine. And then I'll talk about some enterprise templates. So these are accelerators where we provide specific scenario-based um, workflows available for you to download and import into your own system. Um, I'll talk about Ansible integrations and how that works and where you can trigger Ansible from within Avantra and how you can trigger Avantra from Ansible. Really cool stuff. Um, I'll talk briefly on the new user experience that we're constantly enhancing within Avantra. Um, and we have a whole host of new native checks that we provide out of the box for various areas uh, across the product. So I'll go through these in a little bit of detail as we go through. So back to the system, let's start with the fun stuff. Let's start with the automation engine. Um, so our automation engine has been key and core to the product for about uh, three, maybe four years now at this point. Um, and with this release, we've been calling it the automation native release. For, for those of you who really are living and breathing automation day in and day out in your daily lives, um, this is the release for you. Um, this release has come from a lot of customer feedback saying, hey, we're using your existing automation engine, but if only it could do this and this. Um, we've listened, we hope. Uh, we've really enhanced the engine, um, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So the first thing you'll notice is that automation in its own right is a, new, is, is a top level menu now. So previously you'd go into configuration, into automations, and it would all be there. You'll now find it under its own menu, which is automation in itself. Um, and I'll talk briefly about a couple of things here. So the first thing is an automation is a workflow in Avantra. So when you're talking about building an automation, you're talking about building workflows. Um, you'll also have your executions. You'll have step libraries. So steps are the components of your workflow. So put multiple steps together, put them in a workflow, and that's your, your, your automation. Um, we do SAP kernel upgrades, as we've done for many years. Uh, we've now introduced file bundles, so you can send large files along with your automations to remote systems. Maybe it's an installation file, maybe it's something else that you need alongside the workflow. So that's really cool. And then previously, in previous versions of Antrim, we had this concept called jobs, which was the precursor to the current automation engine. Look, it's still there, you can still use it, none of your stuff has gone away, um, so it, you'll see it's marked here as deprecated. Don't be, don't be worried, it's not disappearing you know, tomorrow, um, it's not disappearing next month. It will disappear sometime over the next 12 to 18 months, so do think about migrating some of your stuff over towards workflow, it really is quite simple. Um, and if you need any help, of course, the Avantra support team is available to assist you. Um, so let's start with um, some of the other items. So let, let's let's talk about workflows um, as a starting point. Now I've created a workflow um, for us to, to, to just play with. It's an empty workflow. Um, and if I open it up here, you'll see all the information. So this is just a absolutely standard workflow with nothing in it. Um, and what I wanna show you here is a few of the enhancements that have been made. The first thing is, you can now provide inputs to your workflows. So you can define input parameters and you can say, hey, when I run this workflow, I, want, I have a variable here called X. Uh, it has a default value of Y and its type is string or it can be anything. You can even pass in a system ID. So if you have a custom check or a check that goes critical, you can have a trigger a workflow and pass in its own system ID so the workflow can say, oh, system three, or your, let's say, SAP system, is showing increased CPU utilization. Let's perform an automation on the system. Let's do something. Um, so you can really pass in a whole host 
or even a collection of, of um, uh, information as well in, in as variables into your workflow. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing you'll see here is steps. So you remember earlier I said steps make up workflows. So you can design your own steps. You can use some of our built-in steps. And you'll now find all this information in our new workflow step selector. Um, and here you'll find some built-in ones. You'll, you can find some ones provided by us as part of our enterprise add-ins. Or you can create your own namespaces. And you can see here the, the team here have been uh, working on lots of stuff um, the, the, uh, over, the, uh, over the period. So if I go to built-in steps, um, you can now see that there's lots more built-in steps here that weren't here previously. So for example, you can distribute a file bundle. So if you say, ah, oh, you know what, step one of my workflow, I'm going to send a huge file over to this agent uh, on a remote system so I can use that file as part of my workflow, you can now do that. Um, you can do manual steps where you can say, hey, I've done a load of stuff. I probably need to do some manual effort before I continue. You know, it might be some post-processing of a, an upgrade or something along those lines, but you can essentially pause the workflow and say, I'm waiting for human input or human verification. You can do that. Um, and as I mentioned, you can actually run Ansible playbooks from here as well. Really exciting stuff. So this new um, workflow step library is really important um, in the concept of building up your, your, your workflows. All the stuff you'd expect is here. All the stuff we've been providing for years is now available to you here. Everything from starting a cloud server, starting a database, an SAP system, whatever you want to do, um, as well as all the steps that you yourself have developed um, using JavaScript or using our, 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 our low-code um, uh, platform, you can apply all of these here. So this is a really powerful part of uh, the, uh, the, the Avantra workflow system. And if, if we talk about the inputs so, uh, that, that I talked about earlier, you can now say, okay, you know what? I want to send a notification message. I'm going to send it to a specific action um, with a specific check with data. And you'll see here, I mean, this is just an example. I can say that actually for this uh, check ID, for example, pass it in the workflow input variable here called X. So that variable I created earlier is available for me to pass between different steps, or you can pass outputs of others of one step into another step. So you really get a chance to daisy chain these steps within your workflow. It really is very powerful. Um, and we've also added some failure um, uh, enhancements as well. So if it fails, do you continue? Do you stop? Do you stop and say, hey, check, am I, am I okay to resume? Or you can retry a number of times. Um, so if you're waiting for something to come up, you can say, you know what, try five times, and if it succeeds within those five, we're good. But if it if it doesn't, then fail, um, and all this kind of stuff. So really powerful stuff with the with the inputs, and of course workflows have outputs because you can call workflows within workflows within workflows within workflows. Good luck, have fun, um, but you can pass outputs out of your workflows that perhaps you can use them in other workflows. Um, we also have the concept of variance. So this is where you can decide, you know what. Um, depending on specific scenarios, I mean, if you have 10 variables, you might have a subtle difference between um, something running for SUSE Linux, for example, versus something running for Ubuntu. And so you might want to have a variant for Ubuntu and a variant for SUSE. And so suddenly you can create that really easily. Same workflow, just different inputs going into the workflow. Really powerful stuff. Um, uh, Bernd, our CTO, is very uh, very proud of this one, and it really is cool. So let's create a schedule. Um, it's called Schedule A. And so you can now do advanced scheduling of your workflows. Um, so you can select a variant. You can, you can edit the schedule um, just manually like this, you know, quite easily. Or you can even go down to Cron, for, for those of you who are, who, who are uh, familiar with Cron and, and, and spend a lot of time in Linux. You can go down to Cron level scheduling of your, um, of your workflows. Really cool stuff. Again, all linked into our time zone management and our, our time zone sensitive system, which we've been enhancing as well as part of this release. Um, again, part of customer feedback, which is just fantastic. Um, and then finally, we have our executions. So as you execute, you'll see all the steps, you'll see all the inputs, all the outputs. Really cool stuff. Um, the other things I would point out here in the workflow area, or I said the automation area, is um, file bundles. So what we talked about earlier was that you can you can now send files to remote systems, but it's a little bit more powerful than that because you have file bundle types. 
and you can define these yourselves. So we'll define a few as part of what we provide for enterprise add-ins and this kind of stuff. But actually inside an administration and settings um, under customizing, you can actually create your own file bundle types. So if you have, you know, my special file type um, for, you know, uh, specific to your in-house setup, then you can create a new file type, let's say, sit for a server, you know, rich text here, you, you can put in a huge description, you can say, uh, my special file type for co.ava.ma for mastering of Antra, let me say like that. Um, so now I've created my special file type, and now I can create a new file bundle uh, with my special file type. So you you suddenly got, you start to see that, okay, this is really customizable, this is really powerful. You can create your own file types, you can access them from within your own code within the workflows, and you can send them across um, rem to remote agents as well. So really cool stuff um, from the file type. So I've covered the workflows, inputs, outputs, steps, variants, schedules, executions. I've covered the step library. Um, oh, and the one thing I didn't mention on the step library um, is we now have this fantastic capability. So let's find um, one of my uh, steps here. So let's just go BRO. Um, so let's take this one here. So app guest update as an example, right? So this is uh, one of our enterprise add-ins. Um, and so here I have the, the source code here from, from, from what I was trying to do. Um, but I now have this opportunity over here to test. And this means that I can select any system. So let's say this one here. And I can say run script, and it'll run that script on the server. And I get the, the results uh, output here. So, so message, execution successful, there's the output. But I actually now have this really cool ability to debug the script, um, which is really powerful. So if I hit debug, um, I now get the opportunity, if I take this link that it's provided me here, to come in and I get to step through the code in real time while it's executing on the remote agent. So this is an exceptionally powerful tool for automators to be able to see exactly what's happening with their code and to be able to step through it and say, ah, oh, that's where the problem is. That's what the, that's what the problem is. So, and you get breakpoints, all the stuff you'd expect, and it's using the Chrome debugger tools, which are built in. Um, so really exceptionally powerful and really excited about this one um, and, and really accelerates the development process as well for our automation natives. So um, that's the step library. I've talked about file bundles. Um, I've talked about, about integrations. So you can now, for example, call workflows from uh, notifications. So under notifications, global notifications, you now have output channels, for example, to trigger an automation workflow. And this is really important if you wanna trigger an automation based on a check changing status or something along those lines. So really powerful stuff. stuff. Um, and I mentioned the debugger. So they are the enhancements to the automation engine that have come in Avantra 23. Uh, really exciting stuff. Um, and as always, if you want more information, we'll be releasing more Mastering Avantra videos over the next um, few weeks. Um, but you also have access to our documentation, the documentation website as well. And you always have the support system if you wanna to, uh, ask us some, some more in-depth questions. And um, I wanna talk about a little bit about enterprise automation templates because Avantra 23 brings a huge quantity of automation templates again. Um, so if I pop over here to the support website, accessible via the customer hub, so hub.avantra.com, and you'll find it there under, under support, and there's even a direct link to enterprise add-ins. In fact, let me bring that up there and just show. Um, for, for, for those of you, um, I seem to have lost my uh, internet connection, so let's just uh, wait for it to update. Um, so when you're in the customer hub, you actually have the link here directly to enterprise add-ins over here on the left-hand side. So if you click that, you'll end up here. Um, and we've released a few things, uh, both over the last year, but also with the Mantra 23. And those of you familiar already will know about our Suze hardening, Red Hat hardening, Avantra on Avantra. Um, we've released three OS automation templates uh, with the Mantra 23 available to enterprise edition customers. Uh, which is automated patching of Debian systems, so like Ubuntu, um, SUSE and OpenSUSE patching, and Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux patching as well. So they are downloadable and single-click install into your Avantra system, um, and they're enhanceable by you as well to work in your environment, depending on your setup. 
And so that's really cool. Um, under SAP automation templates, which I know is where, where a lot of you will want me to go next, this is where the really cool stuff is. Um, so we've got transport uh, import automation templates, SAP job maintenance, profile maintenance. I mean, for example, if you wanna make sure that all your SAP systems have uh, passwords that are minimum of 12 characters in length, you can check those profile parameters using a custom check with no code. Um, you can have it trigger one of the profile parameter maintenance uh, automations that we provide to fix it if it's not in the right state and restart the system as well if you so choose. You can actually automate that entire process across your entire landscape. It really is fantastic. Um, spam and Saint updates, so patching automations. Um, SAP system refresh, this is fantastic. If you haven't had a chance to check out our Avantra Summit, which we hosted last month, one of our customers, Scott's Miracle Grow, spoke to me about their own SAP system refresh journey. They've been, they've been co-innovating with us on, on some of this stuff. And they were able to bring SAP system refreshes from a manual effort of three days down to less than two hours. Uh, really fantastic story and I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't already. But this is the system refresh template that they're using. Um, and there's some logical system change automations as well. This list is growing the entire time. Our SAP engineering team is fantastic and, and is working a lot on this stuff. Um, but just wanted to show off that, that, that it's there and it's ready for consumption and, and encourage you all to have a look at it. Ansible integration, I showed that briefly. It's a built-in step within the step library. You can now trigger your, your, your Ansible playbooks. Um, on top of that, we also have the ability for Ansible playbooks to natively call the Avantra APIs. For example, if you've got a, a large playbook to stand up a new system and um, you've done your installation or whatever, and then you, you, you want to delegate some of the in-depth SAP stuff to Avantra, you can do that with ease now with our deep integration um, with Ansible. Really cool co-innovation between ourselves and Red Hat going on there. Um, so, so, so thank you to both of those teams. Um, we have our new user experience, which of course is constantly being enhanced. Um, which you, you can see if you try our new UX button up here. And the kind of the one thing I'd show here if I go straight there is the new landscape browser, where you'll, you've got a brand new way of interacting with your systems to get a bit more of a view of what's on those systems. Um, so for example, if I, if I expand the system, which is actually switched off at the moment, called SID NPL, you get an instant view of, okay, what SAP instances are on that server. You can even click into those instances and see more information about those um, and all of this kind of stuff. So it really is bringing a much more joined up view of your SAP landscape. Um, again, this is being enhanced with every single release. The team are do, doing fantastic work here. Um, so highly recommend that you check that out. Um, and we have a whole host of new built-in uh, checks as well. Um, so we've now five new native checks for PostgreSQL, which was a big ask from, from some of our customers. Um, and PostgreSQL is now available through all editions of Avantra from standard, professional, and enterprise edition. Um, and we have a whole uh, introduction of new SAP checks as well. So daily checks to monitor ABAP licenses, buffer performance. The list here is, is quite long. I won't go through them all, mostly because I don't fully understand all of them. Our engineering team are fantastic at this stuff. Um, and I highly recommend that you check them out as well. Um, and the final thing I'll show you in the system, so if I pop back over here, is again, another request from customers around API keys. So if I go to user management and let's open my own user here, I now have this opportunity over here on the right-hand side to generate a, a, an API key. So that means um, I can create, for example, a dedicated service user with no um, password, so it can't be, lo it can't be logged on uh, directly, and I can give it an API key to access specific functions within Avantra. You can use it when Ansible is calling Avantra. You can use it when ServiceNow is calling Avantra. Um, and it's as easy as hitting generate, um, and it's successfully generated. You do a refresh, there's your key. Um, you can delete them, you can rotate them, all the stuff you would expect uh, within API key management. Um, and that's now introduced as part of Avantra 23. So there we go. That's a whistle stop tour of Avantra 23, which is released this month. Um, highly recommend you go and you download it. Please do read the release notes. Um, you know, we're releasing um, uh, minor patches all the time. So please do read through those. Um, and really hope that you get to 
experience some of the new automation features that we've brought with this release. And please do give us our, your feedback. The final thing, thing actually I probably would mention, and I'll pop back over here to the customer hub, is we have this new feature requests and ideas section of the customer hub which I highly recommend you, you check out if you haven't seen it already. And this is where you can give us your feedback. You say, hey, I really wish Avantra could do this or I want to achieve this. You know, can you add this feature? It gives you an opportunity to vote on other customer ideas, uh, interact with our product team, interact with other customers. Um, so really is a brand new, powerful place for you to tell us where you would like Avantra to go next um, for your automation journey. So that's it. Thank you for joining me today uh, looking through Avantra 23. I hope you enjoy it and see you next time.